Whenever people ask me what London is like, I always say, London is not a city. London is an experience. You're probably thinking, what the heck am I on about? Well, if you have been following us, you probably know by now that Adrian is British and I spent 10 years of my life in England. And a lot of these years were spent in and out of London. And let me tell you that if you are planning to visit London anytime soon, be prepared to be mind blown by all that London has to offer. Also, this is just the beginning of the series of videos we plan to create about London. There are so many things to do in London, it would be impossible to cover most of them in just one video. By the way, if you haven't yet, subscribe now to get notified of our new videos. We have exciting videos to share. London is one of the very few cities in the world where you will never run out of things to do. After visiting Budapest, Bratislava, Vienna, Salzburg, and Munich, Adrian and I headed back to where our hearts call home, the UK. We started our trip by visiting a local pub in London where we hung out with our dear friends. London is the perfect place to try different foods from all over the world, and one of the best places to do so is in Borough Market. From fudge, to pastries, to tinned fish, and delicious paella, Borough Market is a local and a visitor's favorite. Borough Market is a treasure trove of locally made goods, most of them fresh and absolutely mouth-watering. Mercato Mayfair is another one-of-a-kind destination for international cuisine made from sustainable ingredients. Mercato is housed in what was one St. Mark's Church, which was deconsecrated in 1974. After an extensive overhaul, it is now a perfect stop for delicious food. There are lots of choices from European to Asian cuisine. Adrian and I chose to eat at a Spanish eatery where we had the most delicious sangria that we have both had in our entire lives. If you do decide to go, try their rooftop outdoor seating on a dry or sunny day. London is very famous for its markets, but perhaps one of the most popular destinations is Portobello Road in Notting Hill where the world-famous Portobello Road Market is held from Monday to Saturday. The market on Portobello Road is where you will find all kinds of unique stuff, from clothing to antiques to statement outfits and jewelry. If you're a fan of Notting Hill, you will find the travel bookshop that was once featured in the film here. Sadly, it's no longer a bookshop, but a souvenir store. And remember Will's flat with a blue door? Yep, it's still here. Portobello Road is also home to many bakeries and cafes, and you will be spoiled for choices, including this one with an interesting name. One of them being my favorite, the Hummingbird Bakery, with its colorful and delicious cupcakes. And we found one with huge mince pies, which Adrian, the mince pie connoisseur, proved. One of the things I love most about this neighborhood is the endless amount of colorful houses that sit in rows. They are just picture perfect. Knightsbridge is one of the most luxurious places in London. It is home to high-end shops and establishments, including the iconic Harrods Department Store. Adrian and I don't really like to come here to shop since most of their stuff is out of our price range. However, we do love the food court here. From chocolates to coffee to fresh fruit and baked goods, everything you will find here is of very high quality. Right
right across from Harrods, Adrian and I found a really amazing restaurant cafe called Leto, where we had an exquisite English breakfast and apple crepes. And of course, Earl Grey tea. And this pistachio latte was to die for. I've tried some before, but this one just blows every one of those in my past out of the water. There is no limit to high-end shopping in London, and New Bond Street is another one of those places for such. And while I don't come here to shop, one of the enjoyable things you'll see and find in London are the historic buildings and neighborhoods where these shops can be found. And since our most recent trip was during Christmas, it was just a treat seeing the lights and decorations. The Royal Exchange is one of London's grand historic landmarks. It was founded in 1571 to act as the center of commerce. Lloyd's Insurance occupied this building for 150 years, but today it's home to luxury boutiques and a Fort Newman Mason shop and restaurant. While we were there, we were watched an artisan carve a slab of marble. After visiting the Royal Exchange, we strolled to the Leaden Hall Market. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, you will recognize this as the location of the Leaky Cauldron and some exterior shots of Diagon Alley. This is one of the oldest markets in London, dating back to the 14th century. Nowadays, it's filled with shops, cafes, and restaurants. When in London, a trip to Covent Garden is a must. Home to Punch and Judy and the Apple Market, Covent Garden is a destination for several reasons. At Christmas, it is gorgeous. There are a few restaurants, shops for both well-known brands and local businesses like this soap stall that I absolutely adored. Covent Garden is also a venue for many street performers like magicians and musicians. While we were there, we were surprised with a shower of fake snow, which tasted like dish soap, by the way. Covent Garden is also where you will find the Royal Opera House in a giant chocolate sculpture of Big Ben. I'm going to be honest with you, Leicester Square isn't one of my favorite places in London. It's crowded and touristy, but it's also home to one of the few M&M worlds on the planet. It's also synonymous with film premieres due to the Odeon Theater as its main venue. The gardens feature statues of fictional characters like Mary Poppins and Bugs Bunny. Also, it's where you can buy tickets for shows nearby and where you can watch musicians and artists perform. London is a melting pot of cultures. A few steps away from Leicester Square, where you will find lots of authentic shops and restaurants, is Chinatown. If you've seen pictures of London before, I guarantee you have seen Piccadilly Circus. With a hard-to-miss billboards and neon signs, it serves as a chaotic junction for many busy streets such as Regent Street and Shaftesbury Avenue. Speaking of Regent Street, this has got to be hands down one of the busiest streets in London due to the amount of shops and attractions it has. As a matter of fact, the world-famous store Hamleys can be found here. If you plan to visit Hamleys, be warned that it is always crowded and busy, especially at Christmas. The busyness of Regent Street can drive us crazy, but I love visiting its arcades and side streets. See how pretty the Christmas decorations are? Do plan to visit London at Christmas? Don't miss Regent Street and this next destination, Carnaby Street. Every year, Carnaby Street comes up with an out-of-this-world theme to celebrate the holidays. This year, it revolves around space and planets. How cool! Carnaby Street is the birthplace of London Cool. It's a famous shopping street that reflects the London style that the world knows today. Not far from Carnaby is the vibrant and energetic streets of Soho. 
Once a home of strip clubs and nightlife, Soho now boasts a plethora of interesting shops and delicious restaurants, cafes, bars, and nightclubs. And let us not forget about Oxford Street, another busy thoroughfare close to Regent Street with rows rows of shops. Whenever we visit London, we always have to watch a live show. It's a must, and I love them. The West End or Theatre District in London is a haven for show lovers like myself. We watched Wicked this time, but shows like Hamilton and Lion King are here too, among many others. Do not miss a show here. Let me tell you about a little gem in London. If you're a book lover, you have to visit Cecil Court. It's an alley full of interesting shops. Cecil Court was also the inspiration for Diagon Alley. For a true historic London experience, Westminster is where we go whenever we want to dig deeper into the history of Britain. Here you will find the historic Westminster Abbey. Since 1066, it has been the location of 40 coronations of British and English monarchs. Westminster is also where you will find the breathtaking House of Parliament. One of its most famous towers is the Elizabeth Tower, which houses the Clock Tower, or most commonly known as Big Ben. Next is South Bank, a vibrant stretch full of attractions like London Dungeon, the London Aquarium, restaurants, amusement parks, and the London Eye. The London Eye is incredibly touristy, but you have to try it at least once. On a clear day, you can treat yourself to a 360-degree view of the entire city of London. The ride itself is very gentle, and when you're in it, it doesn't feel like it's moving at all. Those are really good. One of our favorite things to do in London is walking at night. And mind you, London is very safe. A walk on the Millennium Bridge is a must-do when in London. With dramatic views of the Thames and the city on both sides, St. Paul's Cathedral on one end, it is a scenic stroll that we always do whenever we visit London. Sitting on the highest point in the city is St. Paul's Cathedral. Consecrated in 1697, it is one of the most famous and recognizable sites in London. The original church dates back to AD 604 and it was damaged during the Great Fire. Nope, this is not London Bridge. This is Tower Bridge, which you can actually tour. To get to the top of the tower, you can take an elevator or climb 200 steps of a historic and beautiful staircase. At the top, you will be treated to the fascinating history of the bridge. There are two towers, each with its own walkway. Both walkways have a section with glass floors. Standing on them gives you the illusion of floating above London, which I absolutely enjoyed. Many people mistake it for being the London Bridge, which is actually unassuming and nowhere near as attractive as this. The bridge was officially opened in 1894 by the Prince and Princess of Wales, Edward VII and Alexandra of Denmark. Close to the Tower Bridge is a very important historic landmark, the Tower of London, an iconic symbol of England's rich history and heritage. Founded by William the Conqueror in the 11th century, this historic fortress has served variously as a royal palace, prison, armory, and treasury throughout the centuries. Its imposing walls have witnessed significant events, including coronations, executions, and political intrigue. Today, the Tower of London is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that provides a glimpse into England's tumultuous past through its exhibits, displays of the crown jewels, and captivating tales told by the thief eaters who guard its grounds. On our way to the Tower of London, we found this little church that has been around since 675 AD, All Hallows by the Tower, with its roots dating back to the 7th century. It has endured centuries of history, surviving fires, wars, and the Great Plague. Visiting the basement was an eye-opener, with its plethora of artifacts from the Roman Empire. 
The church even has the plaque for the first governor of Pennsylvania, William Penn, who was baptized in this church. I guess people were much smaller back then. Check out how small that door is. Trafalgar Square stands as one of the city's most iconic landmarks, named in commemoration of the British naval victory at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. The square is dominated by a monument dedicated to Admiral Horatio Nelson, Nelson's Column. Surrounding the column are fountains, statues, and plinths showcasing various historical figures. Trafalgar Square serves as a focal point for public gatherings, celebrations, and events, making it an integral part of London's bustling urban landscape. Unfortunately, it's not the most ideal place to visit on a rainy day. Yes, these wild birds are in London at St. James Park, one of my favorite places for a serene stroll with its lake and wildlife. Close to St. James Park is Hyde Park, one of London's most iconic green spaces, spanning 350 acres, boasting lush greenery, sprawling lawns, and bodies of water, including the famous Serpentine Lake. Taken back to the 16th century, it was once a royal hunting ground. Today, it is a gathering place for locals and tourists alike, hosting events ranging from concerts and festivals to sports activities and outdoor performances. A notable landmark is the Diana Princess of Wales Memorial Fountain, honoring the legacy of Princess Diana with its serene design and flowing water, providing visitors a reflective space for contemplation and remembrance. After our stroll through Hyde Park, we made our way to Buckingham Palace by way of the Mall. And yes, it's pronounced like that, not like shopping mall as we commonly know it in the US. The Mall in London is a grand ceremonial road stretching from Buckingham Palace to Trafalgar Square, serving as a route for royal processions and national celebrations. And of course, no trip to London will be complete without seeing the Buckingham Palace without a tour. The furthest anyone can go is just outside of the gates, but this gives you a good view of the beautiful palace. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that the Buckingham Palace was once a huge townhouse built for the Duke of Buckingham? It only became the London residence of the monarch for Queen Victoria in 1837. Apart from visiting the grounds, our favorite thing to do here is observing the palace guards. I recommend checking out the schedule for the changing of the Royal Palace Guards. The palace offers scheduled and timed tours from mid-July to late September, and the best way to book a tour is through the palace website. If you are particularly interested in history, London will be a fulfilling place for you to visit. As most of us know, British history is extremely fascinating. This small nation greatly participated in many wars in what shaped society today. And all throughout London, you will see countless of memorials that tell many different stories. And if I were you, just invest some time in paying attention to these and knowing the fascinating stories behind them. This is what's part of the London experience. If you see any of these blue plaques, stop for a second to see what it commemorates. The blue plaque system is a way to preserve the history and heritage of the building or article it was placed on. Just like this building, I wonder which story Charles Dickens wrote in this house. 
Oliver Twist, or maybe a Christmas Carol. Did you know that there are 192 museums in London alone? I can create one video on just my favorite ones, but here are the ones that I think is worth a visit, especially for first-time visitors. And the best part is, they're free. First is the Natural History Museum. Housed in this majestic building, it is an amazing museum home to life and earth science specimens, comprising some 80 million items within five main collections. Botany, entomology, mineralogy, paleontology, and zoology. Next is the National Portrait Gallery. While it may seem just a collection of paintings and pictures, each piece holds an important fact or story that you would want to know about. I can spend half a day here. Everything I saw piqued my curiosity and it was fun learning about every single thing on display. The British Museum is also a must. It is renowned for its vast and diverse collection of art, artifacts, and antiquities from cultures around the world, spanning over two million years of history. Another one that would pique your interest is the Tate Modern Gallery. The Tate Modern is popular for its avant-garde contemporary art exhibitions and installations, attracting visitors from around the globe. The National Gallery in London houses a prestigious collection of Western European paintings dating from the 13th to the 19th centuries. Now, the next two require paid admission, but are absolutely worth it. The Churchill War Rooms and the warship HMS Belfast. And lastly, although not a museum, if you're a fan of the Beatles, a pilgrimage to Abbey Road is a must. Remember the album cover? This is a zebra crossing on that picture, which we had to cross, of course. On Abbey Road, you will be able to see the studios that the Beatles made famous, Abbey Road Studios. Although access to the studio itself isn't allowed, there is a shop next to it that you can visit. Where in London can you be this high up with panoramic views of the city? It stands 1,106 feet tall and is considered to be London's vertical city. What is this place? Well, it's none other than the Shard. The Shard is the tallest building in the UK and we found the best views of London from up here. It's an even better place for high tea. Your ticket allows you access to three observation decks on level 68, 69, and 72 via a high-speed elevator. The first one is enclosed with a bar and light music. The highest one on the 72nd floor opens up the building to the sky. And to be honest with you, it kind of frightened me, especially since it was pretty windy up there. But the highlight of our visit to the Shard was our Peter Pan high tea themed at a restaurant on the 31st floor, the Aqua Shard. We were lucky we got a table with a view, and my tour guide Adrian was the best at pointing out the best spots in London from above. But this was no ordinary high tea. Check out the setup and Adrian's face and it was really cool to see the little show afterwards. 
this high tea experience was really worth every penny since we had access to unlimited drinks and a few cool treats. And they made it fun by adding goodies hidden in treasure chests. interested in this experience, I highly recommend booking your ticket in advance on their website. Pick the dates or date of your choice and indicate the number in your party. Oh, and don't forget to have your pictures taken at the base of the shard. They were a bit cheesy, but I liked them. You can tell that Adrian wasn't as pleased as I was. Navigating through London may look complicated, but it really isn't. If there is anything I really like about London, it's the easy access to public transport. For me, the best way to get around the city is by riding the tube. You can also take the underground or the tube from the airport. Paying to access the tube is easy. At the gates, just use your credit card or smartphone to pay, or you can also buy tickets at the machines you will find at each station. If you do get tickets, make sure to get the Oyster card and pay for only the zones that you will visit. From the airport, you can take a bus too that will take you to different parts of the UK. You can also take the bus around London, which is pretty cheap, but I find the tube to be easier to use. To experience London on the River Thames, I recommend taking a city cruise. And for the easiest, and not necessarily the quickest, but it's also the most expensive way, you can always take a taxi around the city. You can also use popular rideshare apps like Uber and Bolt. Another good way to get around is to get on a hop-on, hop-off bus. It takes you to London's most popular spots and you can get on and off at each stop within a certain time frame. Eating out in London is an adventure itself, but it can be very expensive. If you're on a tight budget, we recommend that you check out grocery stores like Sainsbury's, Tesco, or M&S. They have great food choices and meal deals that are very affordable. From delicious salads to pasties and sandwiches, there will be lots of choices for you. And a meal deal affords you a salad or sandwich, plus chips or chocolate, and a drink. And by the way, don't forget street food too! But if you do see a social bite during your travels, make it a point to eat or have a coffee at one of their many cafes. Run by volunteers, it is a cafe that helps alleviate homelessness. Every penny you spend here goes to a good cause. And the coffee is really good too. Now, this is a bit random, but if you see a sink like this, remember that you have two choices. Either get frostbite from really cold water or burn yourself with very hot water. And don't forget to visit a pub for a taste of authentic British fun. You will see lots of these iconic phone booths everywhere in London. Some of them are functional, some of them are not. And I have to warn you, some of them are pretty dirty. London is mostly cashless and credit cards and paying by smartphone can be done almost anywhere. London is such an amazing city and I really encourage you to visit. We hope you like this video and if you haven't, please subscribe and get notifications of our upcoming videos. Thank you again for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon.